Welcome back. This is the third in a series of videos and the purpose of these videos is to demonstrate a process for proving the correctness of an operation. In the first video, we showed you how to create a reasoning table for an operation called do nothing. In the second video, we showed you how to generate verification conditions, also known as VCs, for the operation do nothing. There were three verification conditions, one for state one, one for state two, and one for state three. In this third video, we're going to show you how to prove each of those three VCs from the second video, which will then prove the overall correctness of the do nothing operation. We'll start with the verification condition for state zero right before the call to increment. We must confirm that the precondition for increment holds and we get to assume do nothing's precondition. This is where our verification condition for state zero comes from. At this point, we need to make it clear that the do nothing operation was designed using design by contract, which requires that the client or calling operation is responsible for guaranteeing that the called operations precondition holds. Design by contract gives the developer leverage when reasoning about software. In state zero, she knows that the caller had to guarantee do nothing's precondition, and this is why she gets to assume that it holds. Additionally, design by contract requires the developer to confirm that increments precondition is satisfied. That's because do nothing is now the caller. Let's move on to proving VC number one. I've rewritten it here using the labels P1 and P2 for the two premises. For the logical implication used in VC number one, we're going to use a direct proof technique. With a direct proof, you assume the premise and then show that the conclusion must be true. For VC number one, we assume both premises, P1 and P2, and we must show the conclusion is true, which we'll label C1. In this proof, we notice that the premise P2 is equal to the conclusion C1. We're going to apply a rule of inference called simplification. When you know P and Q to be true, simplification allows you to utilize either one, P or Q. Applying simplification to the conjunction P1 and P2 allows us to utilize P2 in the next step. Since P2 equals C1, and we assume P2 to be true, C1 must be true. Let's take a few moments to dig a little deeper into proof involving implication. As a reminder, here's the truth table for P implies Q. Again, in a direct proof, we are assuming premise P, meaning that we are working with cases 1, and 2 from the truth table. Then we show conclusion Q to be true, which eliminates case 2 from the truth table, leaving us with case 1. Now all remaining cases in the truth table have true as their outcome. Let's move on to proving VC number two. For VC number two, we have to show that it's okay to call decrement. We'll use premises P1, P2, and P3 to show decrement's precondition holds, and we'll label it C2. Here we have all three premises. P1 and P2 come from state zero, P3 from state one. We have to show C2, the precondition for decrement. We'll write out VC number two as P1 and P2 and P3 implies C2. Now the proof. We write down C2, which is min int is less than or equal to I1 minus 1. And we notice that I1 can be rewritten as I0 plus 1, so we do the substitution. but I0 plus 1 minus 1 is just I0 by simplification. 
This last step just simplified to premise P1, which means we've now shown conclusion C2. Now let's work on VC number 3. We'll show that the post condition holds for do nothing. We'll label it C3. To show conclusion C3, we can make use of premises 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here, I've written out all the premises and added P4 from state 2. We need to show conclusion C3, which is the post condition for do nothing. Here's VC number 3. P1, P2, P3, and P4 implies C3. Start the proof with I2 equals I0. Substitute I1 minus 1 for I2, then substitute I0 plus 1 for I1, then simplify. That proves VC number 3 and shows that do nothing meets its specification. Wrapping up, this process works on complex examples as well. It utilizes design by contract, pre and post conditions for operations, and logic and proof techniques. And finally, it makes clearer where our informal methods come from. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.